So there are some instructions here um, just informing you that you can participate in the webinar by dialing in uh, using your telephone or using your computer microphone and speakers. Um, since we have a lot of people logged into the webinar today, I will leave everyone muted. If you do have questions during the presentation, just type them into the chat panel or the questions panel, and Becca will pick up any questions that you might have while I'm presenting. Um, at the end of the webinar, we will have time for question and answer, and at that time, um, I'll ask if anyone wants to speak that you click on the raise hand button. It looks like a little hand icon in the GoToWebinar interface, and I can unmute you um, after you raise your hand if you want to ask a question. But otherwise, um, go ahead and type them in. There's just too many people for me to uh, unmute everyone. It would be hard for folks to hear. So uh, with that being said, we'll go ahead and start. Um, my name is Derek Bovey. I work here as a product specialist in our sales and marketing department. And in today's webinar, we're going to talk to you about uh, ZoomText hotkeys and how you can really use these to increase your productivity um, when you're using ZoomText throughout the day. So <clears throat> for those of you that um, whoops, I actually want to go to, uh, this is an outline of what we're going to cover. I mean, basically, we'll talk about why hotkeys are important, and then we'll demonstrate um, some of the most useful hotkeys. So this is going to be a live demonstration. You're going to see ZoomText running. But I'm also going to be using the ZoomText camera feature um, in a split screen mode so you can see exactly what hotkeys I'm pressing on the keyboard as well and see ZoomText on the other half of the screen. And then lastly, um, we'll show you how you can reassign hotkeys to avoid hotkey conflicts. Um, and then after that, we'll open it up to question and answer. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the term, um, what are hotkeys? And hotkeys are basically keyboard shortcuts that allow you to perform program functions. In the case of ZoomText, they're usually a combination of uh, two or more keys that will um, either launch uh, a tool or change a setting in the program. So why are these important? Um, a lot of times using hotkeys is faster and more efficient than using a mouse, um, especially when you're magnifying the screen. You have to move your mouse a lot more uh, in order to move your view around, so it might take you a lot longer to do something like open the Start menu, for example, um, rather than just pressing the Windows key on your keyboard. Um, when can you use them? Uh, a lot of programs, like let's say Photoshop, for example, um, Photoshop has many hotkeys for uh, any of the tools and brushes in the program, but you can only use them when you're in Photoshop. So, you know, I can't hit the B key to activate the brush when I'm in Microsoft Word. But in the case of ZoomText, our hotkeys work regardless of where you are on your computer. As long as ZoomText is running, those ZoomText Zoom hotkeys uh, will be functional and take precedence over any other application. So again, when, can you, when do you, do you want to use these hotkeys? And the answer is really anywhere and everywhere. Um, you know, they're really going to be helpful to uh, allow you to launch things quicker, uh, such as the reading tools, and, and just you know, be more proficient when you use your computer. Um, we're also going to show you some of these hotkeys um, that I'm showing you here today uh, do have dedicated buttons on the ZoomText keyboard, so I'm going to point those out to you as well um, when I'm pressing these hotkey combinations. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll jump right into the live demo. And ZoomText user interface. I'm going to go ahead and switch over here. Um, now I do already have ZoomText running, so it is up and running here. First thing I'm going to do so you can see what uh, key combinations I'm pressing on the keyboard is go to the Tools tab Tools, and launch the camera in Docked View, which is kind of like a split screen view. Rotate. Okay, so. Zoom text user interface. Magnifier. So underneath, um, on the bottom half of our screen, you can see my keyboard. And at the top half, you're going to see Zoom text running uh, on our desktop. Okay. So the first uh, group of hotkeys we're going to cover um, deal with uh, the Zoom Text toolbar or the user interface and changing things on that. So the first example I'll give you is let's say someone comes up to your computer and they're a sighted uh, individual and they want to disable Zoom Text. They don't want to exit the program entirely, but they just want to turn it off temporarily so they can um, use the computer without it being magnified. That hotkey is Alt delete. So you're going to hold down the Alt key, either on the left File has submenus. 
either the right or left hand side of the keyboard, hold down that key, and then press the delete key. Now, when I disable Zoom Text, it's also going to turn off my camera view. So you're going to see this all disappear once I press that delete key down. Okay, so now we've got Zoom Text disabled. Our screen is unmagnified, um, you know, and, and the user can go up to it, do what they need to do. And when you come back to the computer, you're going to hold down the Alt key and press the Insert key. Camera help Zoom Text enabled. Okay, so you can see that there, the Insert key on most keyboards is above the delete key. Okay. Um, now let's say we zoom have text user. the toolbar minimized, okay, and I want to bring up the zoom text toolbar. I don't know where it is and it's a hassle for me to go down to uh, the taskbar here. You can bring up the zoom text toolbar anytime by holding down control and shift and then pressing the U key. So control shift U will bring up the toolbar now, on the Zoom Text keyboard, um, if you want to enable and disable Zoom Text, it's the second key here. It looks like a magnifying glass. This will cycle Zoom Text on and off. The button next to it, which looks like a toolbox, that will um, minimize and maximize or bring into view the Zoom Text toolbar. So a um, little bit easier with the Zoom Text keyboard because you don't have to do things like Control-Shift-U, uh, which is kind of a difficult hot key to do. Okay. So those are some very simple hotkeys um, to enable, disable Zoom text, and also bring up the toolbar. Now, um, one of the most important hotkeys is changing magnification level. Um, so if I have a web browser, open, edit box. go to, it. and let's say I'm on something like Google News, a name edit box. So we'll just load this up. Page loaded, and let's say I want to change my magnification level. Well, I can do it a number of different ways. Um, I could bring up the Zoom Text toolbar and then click on the uh, up and Zoom. down arrows in the power spin box here. But it's a lot more efficient for me to use uh, hotkeys while I'm in the application that I'm looking at. So let's minimize this. Uh, we're back to Firefox here. And if I want to increase my magnification level, I'm going to hold down the Alt key. Again, it doesn't matter which Alt key you hold down. File has submenu. File. Now, if I hit the Alt key, that's going to activate the file menu. So that's why that happened. But hold down either one of the Alt keys, and then press the plus key to increase your magnification level. 2.5x, 3x, 4x. Okay, so you can see as I'm hitting that plus key, it's increasing. And note that this is the plus key on the number pad, okay? Not the plus key over here um, by the backspace key, but on the number pad. If you want to decrease your magnification level, it's Alt minus. 3x, 2.5x, 2x. Okay, so it's very simple to do. Just remember that it's on the number pad and not uh, across the row of numbers here. Now on the Zoom Text keyboard, you have dedicated buttons here, the plus and minus buttons to increase and decrease your magnification level. 2.5x, 2x. So again, very easy with the keyboard as well, but if you don't have the keyboard, just remember Alt plus and Alt minus. Uh, we'll do that for you as well. Okay, so um, some of the other things that we have, and let's go ahead and do Control Shift U. Zoom Text User Interface. Um, all of the enhancements, the color filter, pointer enhancement, cursor enhancement, and focus enhancement, those have hotkey equivalents to turn any of those features on. So let's go ahead and start with the color filter. That hotkey is Control Shift C. Color enhancements enabled. Okay. So hitting this hot key will toggle the enhancement on and off. It won't cycle through any of the schemes, but it'll just turn it on and off. So again, Control Shift C, and that will turn it off. Color enhancements disabled. Okay. Zoom Text keyboard does have a dedicated button for that. It's the color wheel button, which is the four button in from the left. Color enhancements enabled. So if I press that, it'll turn it on and off as well. Color enhancements disabled. Okay. Um, Moving on, the next one we have is the pointer enhancement. That hotkey is Control Shift P. Pointer enhancements enabled. And you can see that now I have the larger yellow mouse pointer on screen. If I hit that hotkey one more time, you'll see it'll change uh, back to the default pointer. Pointer enhancements disabled. Okay. Again, dedicated button for it on the Zoom Text keyboard. It's right next to the color filter icon. All right. 
The next enhancement we have is the cursor enhancement. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, go to AWBS on the go to a search box here so you can see it turning on. That hotkey is Control Shift R. Cursor enhancements enabled. Okay, so you can see that that turned on once I pressed that hotkey. All of the enhancements um, start with the Control and Shift keys as the primary modifier keys. Okay. Control Shift R will turn that off. Cursor enhancements disabled. And again, there's a dedicated button for the cursor enhancement right here, um, next to the pointer enhancement button on the Zoom Text keyboard. Okay. Now the last enhancement, Zoom Text Shoot, is the focus enhancement, and this does not have a dedicated button on the keyboard. Um, so its hotkey is Control Shift. O as an Oscar. Focus enhancements enabled. Now it told me that the enhancement is enabled. Um, I don't see it right now, but I will see it if I open uh, the focus enhancement menu here. Normal. You'll see that that shows up right there. And if I press the hotkey one more time, again, Control Shift O. Focus enhancements disabled. You'll see that it disappears. Okay. So all of these hotkeys will turn. Uh, any of the enhancements off. And for those of you that are thinking, oh my god, I can't remember all these keys, um, we're going to send you uh, a document after the webinar that's going to have not only the pre-recorded uh, recorded version of today's webinar, but um, a Word document that contains a list of all these hotkeys. You don't, don't worry about trying to remember them all. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate them to you and show you where they are on the keyboard, um, but you'll have a list of them afterwards, so don't worry about having to memorize all these. Okay, um, now the finders, they also, again, I, sh I should preface this too, everything in Zoom Text has a hotkey. So um, any, anything that you want to do in the program has a hotkey equivalent. So we're going to go through and show you how you launch um, most of the features in the product. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the desktop finder. Um, this hotkey is Control-Shift-D, okay? Search so, for hold down the control and shift keys and then press the D key and the desktop finder will allow you to um, search for uh, files or programs on your computer. Zoom text user interface. Now web finder we're going to go through in a little bit more detail at the end of the webinar but to launch web finder it's control shift W. Okay. Web finder all, all right. text. Now, this will only be enabled if I have a web browser open. Um, in this case, I did have Firefox open, so Web Finder launched. But if I did name edit box, say close this, I'm on my desktop. Okay, and I try and launch Web Finder with Control Shift W. Web Finder, please activate a supported browser before launching Web Finder. Okay, okay. You, you'll get a message saying you need to activate a supported web browser. So if you get that message, that means you need to have a web browser open and active before launching the tool. Um, now on the keyboard, um, there are buttons for uh, Desktop Finder right here and Web Finder next to it. Okay, so there are buttons for that. Um, there's not a dedicated keyboard button for the Text Finder, which is Control-Shift-T as in Tom. Search, search for. Okay. And this allows you to search for any text that's visible uh, within the active window or active program or entire screen. Okay, so those are, those are all the hotkeys um, on the magnifier toolbar. Um, there's a few other hotkeys I'm going to show you regarding magnification that um, most people probably don't know about but that are very handy. And these are the scroll hotkeys which allow you to move your magnified view without moving the mouse. And to do this, all you'll need to do is hold down the Alt key and press the arrow keys. So if I hold down Alt and press the down arrow, you're going to see my view is going to move down okay, without me moving the mouse. You can go in any of the four directions. Simply hold down Alt and then press the direction. If I let go of the Alt key, it's going to stop moving. Also, if you wanted to go faster, let's say, for example, I want to go in the up direction very quickly. I can hold down Alt and press the up key. Let's, let's do it three times. One, two, three. And you'll see that that'll scroll even faster. Okay, so you can use Alt arrows to move your view around in any of the four directions as well. And this will scroll along nicely, very smoothly, as you can see. Um, it may be a little bit easier for people than using the mouse if you're panning a document, for example. Okay, so those are the scroll hotkeys. 
Um, if you want to jump your view around, you can do this. There are some hotkeys for this. Um, to jump up, you hold down Alt and press the Page Up button. Okay, this jumps up to the top half of the screen. Alt Page Down goes to the bottom half of the screen. If you want to go left and right, Alt End will go right. Alt Home will go left. So you can kind of go in four different quadrants. Um, alt page up to go up, alt page down to go down, and then left right with alt home and end. So for example, if I wanted to go to the upper right hand corner of the screen, right now I'm in the lower left, I can do alt end to go to the right, and then alt page up to get to the upper half. Okay, so these are keyboard equivalents to navigate uh, what you would normally do with the mouse. If you want to get back to the center of the screen, um, this is going to be Alt Numpad 5, but with the file has sub menu. Sorry about that, but with the uh, number lock turned off. So I'm going to press the num lock button. The lights now turned off, uh, as you can see here. Alt Numpad 5. Now we're in the uh, center of our view. Okay. Um, another useful hotkey, and again, this is with the num lock off in this case. In the case of these three hotkeys, the jump center, which I just showed you, and these next two, um, there's a hotkey called save view, which basically saves the area of the screen that you're looking at. So um, let me see if I can open an Excel document or something. Microsoft so, Excel 20. Just to give you a little bit of context here. Recent. Uh, okay. Microsoft Excel. Book so, one. So let's say um, I'm concerned with these category totals down here, okay? And I want to jump back to this part of my screen. Um, frequently, I can press Alt, Numpad, Slash, again with the Numpad off. View saved. Zoom text tells me that the view is saved. So now if I'm somewhere else, if I'm entering in um, $74. some different values here, for example, um, and I want to um, go back to the view that I saved, I can press Alt, Numpad, Asterisk, which is next to the, uh, the slash. View restored. It'll restore my view and bring me back to exactly where I was. So you can only save one view at a time, um, but it's kind of nice if you're doing something in an application where you're constantly going back and forth um, on screen. So all of these scroll command hotkeys, um, these are, there's no keyboard buttons for those. Um, so those are hotkey only, but again, can be very nice for um, moving around your screen without using the mouse, okay? So maybe if you have motor issues and, and you have difficulty using the mouse, um, this can be a helpful way to still get around the screen very fast and efficiently. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Zoom Text toolbar. I'm going to hit Control-Shift-U, because we're going to go ahead and switch over to the uh, reader portion here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Reader tab just so we can take a look at the icons reader. of the different features. Um, the very first hotkey, if you want to turn speech on and off, that is Alt-Shift-S. Speech disabled. And Zoom Text will say Speech Disabled. There is a button for this. It's all the way at the right-hand side of the Zoom Text keyboard. If you press that button, which looks like a, uh, a person speaking, uh, that will toggle speech on and off. Speech. Enabled. I've left uh, I've left speech enabled for most of this um, because I want it. I want you to be able to hear Zoom Text saying some of the things when I hit the keys, like changing the magnification level. It speaks back to me what uh, mag level I'm at. So because it's kind of hard to tell, you know, when I'm pressing a key and when I'm not. So um, I am leaving speech turned on for most of this. If you want to increase your speech rate, um, remember that increasing magnification with Alt Plus and Alt Minus. Uh, conversely, increasing the speech rate is control plus and control minus. Either control key, there's, there's two of them on the keyboard, either left or right. So if I press this, control plus. Speech rate, 55%. Okay, so I've increased it to 55. If I press control minus. Speech rate, 50%. Brings me back to uh, 50%. There are uh, keyboard buttons for that on the Zoom Text keyboard up and down arrows here will increase or decrease the speech rate. Speech rate, 55%. Speech rate, 50%. Okay. Now, how about launching some of the reading tools? All right. And if we want to do this, we'll need to be in an application that we can read something with. So 
You know, for example, if I was on Microsoft the Excel and I tried launching App Reader, which is Alt Shift A. App Reader Air App Reader is unable to. St I'm just going to hit the Control key to stop Zoom Text from speaking. That's another hot key. Um, if I try launching App Reader or Doc Reader on something like my desktop, there's no text uh, for it to read there. So we need to get into an application um, okay. that has text. So I'm going to go ahead and open um, Gettysburg so Address. Document. Gettysburg T. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go on the web for App Reader here. A main edit box. Go to a website about. Let's go to Google News. A main edit box. And right now, I'm typing in a different keyboard when I'm typing in the website. Page URL, loaded. Google News. Just because the other keyboard's a little bit away from me, and it'd be kind of hard for me to get over there and type effectively. Sports. So, okay. So on our website, uh, let's say we want to launch App Reader. The hot key for that is Alt Shift A. Oops, come on. App Reader Tool. Okay, so it launches the App Reader Tool, and then we can move our mouse and left click uh, anywhere on screen and have it start reading. World to NFL. Replace the replacements Wall Street Journal. It's kind of funny. That's what I posted on my Facebook status last night is we need to replace the replacement referees in the NFL. For those of you that are sports fans and watch football, um, it's been pretty ugly the past two weeks. But anyway. So uh, again, launching App Reader is Alt-Shift-A. We've added a new hotkey in Zoom Text 10 to make this even easier. So instead of Alt-Shift-A and then me clicking somewhere, all I need to do is hold down the Alt and Shift keys and then left click on where I want to start reading. So it'll start from whatever word I click on. So I'm holding down Alt and Shift. Conversations a replacement referee might have for throwing a flag and penalizing 18 two minutes for Hitting the enter key at any time will pause app reader. If you press enter again, it'll resume reading. For cross-checking, related Washington Redskins. Now. If you're ready to exit app reader, you can use the right uh, right mouse button or hit the escape key. So if I hit escape, you'll see that the app reader uh, frame disappears. Okay. Um, let's see. So doc reader is the next thing I'll show you. And unfortunately, I can't show you uh, doc reader while the camera is running. So I'll just show you where the hot key is Getting are, and then exit out of the camera and um, show it to you that way. So to launch App Reader, it's or excuse me, Doc Reader, it's Alt Shift D. Okay, that will launch Doc Reader. If I do it now, Zoom Tech um, Tim is Zoom Tech. It'll tell me that the feature I'm trying to use is not available while the camera's active. So Gettysburg Address Duck Compatibility Mode Microsoft Word. Exit out of the camera, and I believe that hot key to launch the camera, toggle the camera on and off, is Control Windows Enter. Zoom text camera disabled. Okay, so I turn the camera off. Now I'm going to go ahead and start Doc Reader, which again is Alt Shift D. Doc Reader is now launched. I can hit Enter to start reading. The Gettysburg Address four score and seven and Escape to exit Doc Reader. T. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and relaunch the camera. So that hotkey, uh, in case you you missed it, Control Windows Enter. Zoom text camera. And then we see that the camera launches and the toolbar uh, is visible in front of us. Gettysburg Address. The Gettysburg Address. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Zoom Text Toolbar, Control Shift U. Zoom Text User Interface. Now the next uh, feature I'm going to show you how to launch from a hotkey is called the Speak It tool. And the Speak It tool is really kind of a spot reading tool. So it allows you to um, select an area of text on screen that you want to read or single click on the word and have the word read back to you. To launch the Speak It tool, you're going to hold down the Alt and Shift keys and then press the I key on the keyboard. Speak It tool. Okay, so Zoom Text told me that I've launched the Speak It tool, and if I left click on a word, yeah. it'll read the word to me. If I left click and drag, and make a selection around any text, after I let go of the mouse, uh, left mouse button, it will read it back to me. The Gettysburg Address. Okay. So that's the Speak It tool. When you're ready to exit, hit Escape or right click the mouse. Okay. So, let's see, moving on. Um, uh, a few other things I'll just mention really quickly uh, before we get into some of the Zoom Text 10 features and their hotkeys. If you're in App Reader, so let's say I do Alt Shift left click, 
Um, I can increase the magnification while app reader is reading. So while it's reading, I'm going to hit Alt plus and minus just to show you that I can do that. App reader error the text you are attempt. Gettysburg address dot the Gettysburg address. Four score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived. Let me go ahead and pause this so you can see. So even while app reader is reading or if it's paused, if I'm hitting Alt plus and minus, I can dynamically change that magnification level uh, even while I'm in the reading tool. Okay, so that's just a quick tip, and I'm going to hit escape to exit out of app reader. Okay, um, now we'll go ahead and move on to hotkeys for some of the new features in Zoom Text 10. So go ahead and bring up the toolbar, Control Shift U. Zoom Text user interface. Go ahead and click on the Tools tab. Tools. First one we're going to talk about is Background Reader. Um, so there's a lot of keys for Background Reader, so I'll show you uh, some of the more useful ones. And the way that you use Background Reader is first you have to select text with your mouse. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go to the web and open up uh, our blog. Okay. So Page loaded, zoomed in, the AI Square blog. Let's say I want to read some text in this article. I'm going to go ahead and left click and select the text. Right? And then I can start Background Reader immediately from the selected text by pressing Caps Lock S on the keyboard. For those of you that watch reality TV or are an avid fan of our blog, you may already know about Christine Ha's incredible story. Eight. Now I just went ahead and paused that by pressing Caps Lock Enter. So pressing Caps Enter uh, will play and pause the reading. If you wanted to restart from the beginning, hit Caps Lock Backspace. For those of you that watch reality TV or are an avid fan of our blog, you may already know. All right, let's say um, I just went ahead and pause that again, caps lock, enter. Let's say you want to kind of skip through some of the content here. Um, there are buttons that allow you to navigate by sentence and word, and there are hotkey equivalents for this as well. So if you want to go to the next sentence, press caps lock, right arrow. A contestant on Master Chef. A reality TV show featuring TV culinary expert Gordon Ramsay. Christine not only became the first legally blind contestant. Go ahead and pause that. So if I want to advance to the next sentence, it's control right, or excuse me, caps lock right arrow. Previous sentence is caps lock left. I wanted to read the current sentence that I'm on, caps lock space bar. A contestant on Master Chef. A reality TV show featuring TV culinary expert Gordon Ramsay. Okay, I'll go ahead and pause that. A lot of times you're going to be wanting, wanting to do these hotkeys while it's reading. I'm pausing it so that it's, I'm not continually speaking over it. So, um, you know, anytime you do these navigation keys, it's probably going to be reading while you do those. Um, I'm just pausing so that you can hear what I'm doing. You can also navigate by word if you like. Um, that is control caps lock, left and right arrow. Only became the first. Okay. If you wanted to read the current word that you're on, control caps lock space bar. First, F I R S T, Foxtrot in the Romeo Sierra Tango. And if I keep hitting that hotkey, again, control caps lock space bar, it'll not only read the word, spell it out to me, but also give me the military spelling of it as well. So with background reader, um, you've got navigation keys, you've got keys to play, pause, and restart the reading as well. Um, easiest way to launch it again is select the text and then press caps lock S. Let's say you minimize the toolbar, you can't find it, and you want to bring up the toolbar again. All you need to do is press caps lock T. Restart. Okay, that brings the toolbar back up. When you're done with background reader, all you need to do is press caps lock escape. Background reader closed. And it will close background reader. Okay. So that's how that works, and some of the hotkeys for background reader. Now the next feature, we're going to show you the hotkeys for. Again, I'm going to bring up the toolbar. Oops, why that didn't work. Let's try that again. Okay, it's not wanting to cooperate. Zoom text choose or interface. Um, next one is Zoom text recorder. Recorder works in the same way. You want to select text um, that you want to record before launching the tool. So. Let's again uh, select some text here on our um, blog. I'll just go ahead and choose a different article here so it's a little bit different. Okay, so I've got this text selected. 
and I can record the selected text by <coughs> pressing Control Caps Lock S. Now remember, background readers Caps Lock S, recorders Control Caps Lock S. Zoom Text Recorder. Okay, that'll automatically open Zoom Text Recorder. I can choose my recording options here and then click the Record Text button. There's really only two hotkeys for Zoom Text Recorder. One is to start from your selection by using Control Caps Lock S. Um, if I've made a selection and copied it by pressing Control C, um, I can start recording the clipboard text, what's called the clipboard text. Anytime you copy something, it's put into a temporary location called the Windows clipboard. So if I want to record information from the clipboard, rather than what I have selected currently, that is Control Caps Lock C, as in Charlie. Zoom text recorder. Okay, so those are the only two hotkeys um, that you need to worry about for Zoom text recorder. All right, so um, I've been showing you, you know, these hotkeys and having the camera view underneath uh, on the bottom half of my screen. Now we're going to go over some of those hotkeys for the Zoom Text camera feature. Um, if you remember from earlier, toggling the feature on and off is done by pressing Control, Windows, Key, Enter. So I press that. Zoom Text and camera disabled. If I press it one more time, it's going to go ahead and enable that for me. Zoom Text camera. Okay. Now, um, if I want to zoom in and out, I can accomplish that by holding down Control Windows key and then pressing the up arrow. You're going to see this start zooming in on my keyboard, um, which is going to, you know, kind of obscure some of the things that I'm doing. But um, Control Windows up. Camera zo camera zoomed in. Camera zoomed in. Okay, you can see it zooming in. Control Windows key down arrow will zoom out. Camera zoomed out. Camera zoomed out. Camera zoomed out. Okay, now we're zoomed all the way out. All right, so most of these hotkeys you're going to do using uh, Control Windows key or Alt Windows key on the keyboard. So zooming in and out is done by pressing Control Win up and down. Um, if you want to, let's say I Color. minimize the toolbar here and I can't find it, even though it is down here um, on the taskbar, I can easily bring that up by pressing Control Windows key T. Camera toolbar. Okay, so there's the toolbar. Um, to cycle between um, docked views, all right, there's four different split screen views here. If I want to cycle through them, it's Control Windows key D. Camera vertical split. Okay, so now we're split vertically. Camera horizontal split. Now we're at the top. Camera vertical split. Right, and finally, if I press that one more time. Camera horizontal split. We're back to our uh, docked bottom view. Um, few other things here. If you want to rotate the image, let's say the image is upside down or uh, just oriented the wrong way, you can rotate the image by pressing Control Win R. Camera image rotated 90 degrees. Camera image rotated 90 degrees. Now it's upside down, so we got to get it back right side up. I'm going to keep hitting the hotkey. Camera image rotated 90 degrees. Camera image rotated 90 degrees. Okay, so that's Control Win R. There's a lot of other um, features in the camera. For example, you can turn on color filters, you can adjust the brightness and contrast, and uh, focus of the camera. So there's hotkeys for those as well. If you want to turn the manual focus on and off, that's Control Win M. Camera auto focusing. Okay, so now it turned on auto focus. Um, if I want to change my manual focus, I can use Control Windows key left and right arrow. You're going to see this is probably going to blur out the screen uh, the camera view when I start doing this. Camera focusing. Camera focus. Camera. Camera foc. Camera. Camera focusing. Okay, so now it's out of focus. I'm going to do Control Win left. To get camera back focusing. To focus. Camera focusing. Camera focusing. Okay, so you have hotkeys to do that as well. Um, to turn on any of your uh, to turn on the co two color schemes is Alt Win space bar. So instead of Control Windows key. Alt Win Space Bar. Camera's color filter enabled. Okay, so we've turned it on. The default is now black on white. If I want to cycle through the schemes, it's Alt Windows Key S. Cycled Camera Color Filter Scheme. Cycled Camera Color Filter Scheme. This will cycle through all the schemes. I know it's kind of hard to see here because um, you know the two colors are kind of weird. Cycled Camera co Cycled Camera Color Filter Scheme. So again, that's Alt Windows Key S. And to turn the color filter off, again, is Alt, Windows key, space bar. Camera's color filter disabled. Okay, now we're back to normal color. 
Um, a few others here. If you want to increase or decrease the brightness of the camera, that's Alt, Windows key, up and down arrow. Cam cam so I'm increasing the brightness here. You can see it's getting camera brightness out. increased. I'll decrease it to bring it back down. Again, Alt, Windows Camera key, brightness down decreased. Arrow. Adjusting the contrast, and again, you know, these are all tools and, and features that you can change on the UI as well, but if you want to do it um, on, uh, on the keyboard, you're free to do it there as well. So brightness was alt, win, up, and down arrow. Contrast is alt, win, left, and right arrow. Okay, so as I press that, you can see I'm increasing the contrast. Camera con a bit darker and decreasing it, getting a little bit lighter. Camera, camera contrast increased. Okay. Now lastly, if you want to go from uh, the split screen view to the full screen view, press Control, Windows key, space bar. Zoom plus, camera full. Now we're in full screen. If I hit Control, Win, space bar again. Zoom plus. We're back to docked. Okay? So those are all the hotkeys that you can use for the Zoom Text camera feature. You're mainly going to want to use these when you're in the full screen. View. Zoom, camera full. Because when I'm in full, I can't see any of the toolbar buttons. There's no mouse for me to manipulate. So I have to use hotkeys like control, win up, camera down, zoom in, camera zoom out. To change my magnification level, alt win space bar. Camera's color energy, filter color enabled. Filtering, alt win S to cycle scheme. Cycled, cycled camera color filter scheme. So on and so forth. So that's where hotkeys Camera's color filter. are most helpful is when you're in the full screen view. And again, I'll hit Alt Win Space Bar. We'll go back to the dock view. Camera's color filter. Camera. Cam, camera's color filter Control disabled. Space bar. Zoom Plus. There we go. All right. Um, the last section of hotkeys we're going to go through uh, is Web Finder, and there are a lot of hotkeys for Web Finder. So let's go ahead Focus. and go back to Google News. Okay, I've got a web page open, and if you remember from the beginning of the webinar. Um, launching Web Finder is done by pressing Control Shift W on the keyboard. Web okay. Finder, all text. So we've gone ahead and launched Web Finder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start navigating by headings. And I can do this on the keyboard by pressing Control H. Sports, heading 2. Okay, so I'm on the first heading. I want to keep going, so I'm going to press Control H. Web Finder, Web Finder has reached the end of the page. Sports, heading two. I know there's more headings here. Web so Finder. What's going on this. Let's try this again. Page loaded sports. Web Finder, okay. all text. So Web Finder's launched. Hit Control H. Sports, heading two. Web Finder, Web Finder has reached the end all right. of the page. Well, Web Finder, like Web Finder wants search. to cooperate with us today, so I'll just uh, go through some of these hotkeys with you. If you want to navigate by headings, it's Control H and Control Shift H to go back in the opposite direction to navigate through images. Control I. Web Finder. Web Finder. Web Finder. Shift search. I. Enter search text. Okay. Um, there are hotkey equivalents for all of the items that you can uh, filter through in Web Finder. If you want to take a look at the list view, which shows you all the web page elements on the screen, press Alt L while Web Finder is open. Web Finder list mode. Okay, so this is open the list, and you can see all the items that are listed here. Um, let's see. Oh, if at any time you want to start app reader, like let's say giants all all items. Oops, I don't want to type anything in there. Search S. Let's say um, Eli Manning start link app reader from this result. Okay, um, I can just press Alt Shift A on my keyboard. App reader tool. And it will start reading. I don't you know what? I think it's actually Alt A. Let's try that one more time. Web Web Finder. All my let's go back down here. Let's take Enter a look at the headings. Links. No, I wanted headings. Head headings. World to NFL. Replace the okay. replacements heading to World to NFL. Replace the replacements Wall Street Journal. So if you're on a result in Web Finder and you want to start reading from that part of the page, just press Control A on the keyboard and it will start reading from there as well. If you want to execute something, let's say um, I open Web Finder. Web, Web Finder, 
Settings. Let's go ahead and close the list. Web Finder Navigation Mode. We'll go back to Navigation Mode, and let's type in, um, I'll just type in NFL and see what happens. K. K. And I'll hit Enter. World to NFL. Replace the replacements. Heading 2. If I want to execute this link, just press Control Enter on the keyboard. That will open the page for you automatically. All right. And again, we have a list for all these hot keys, so don't don't worry if you didn't remember them. Um, there's a lot of them. I even have to look at the list, so um, <laughs> there's there's a lot to try and memorize in the product. But again, there are hot keys for any and everything you can do in Zoom Text. Now, last thing I'm going to show you. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off now. Um, Zoom is, Text camera disabled. Let's say you get a situation. Addressed. I'm going to disable speech. Let's say you've gotten into a situation where there's a uh, hot key in a program that you're using, and Zoom Text already has a hot key for it. For example, um, I believe in Outlook, the reply or reply all hot key is Control Shift R, which also happens to be the same hot key to turn on the cursor enhancement in Zoom Text. So how do we get around that? Well, there's two ways you can do that. There is a hot key in Zoom Text that's called the hot key pass through which basically temporarily disables Zoom Text um, for the next hotkey combination that you press. And that is Alt. Let me turn on the camera so I can show you this. Um, Zoom Text Camera. That is Alt and the pause break key on the keyboard. Hotkey pass through enabled. Okay, so it says hotkey pass through enabled. Once you've done this, you can then press the hotkey for the program that you're in that you want to use. For example, let's say we're in Outlook. Now I could press that Control Shift R hotkey to reply to the email, um, and then bypass turning on the hotkey for the cursor enhancement. Okay. So notice that when I press Control Shift R, you didn't hear Zoom Text say cursor enhancement enabled. If I do it now, cursor enhancements enabled. Now they are; those hotkeys are working. So you can temporarily turn off. Uh, Zoom text from filtering hotkeys by using again Alt Pause Break for the hotkey pass through. If you want something a little bit more permanent, exit. You can do this um, on the Settings menu in Zoom Text. If we go to Settings and then Hotkeys, they're all arranged here in different groups. Um, basically, category of hotkeys are listed here. So, in the case of um, the cursor enhancement, it's under the Magnifier toolbar group, and you can see right here it says cursor enhancements on off. Here are modifier keys, control, shift, and the primary key is R. You have to have one of these modifier keys checked in order for the hotkey to work. But if we want to change it, you could do something like um, control windows key R, for example, okay, and that will be my new hotkey. Or if I wanted to, I could make it, I'll make it something a little bit more obscure just so you can see how it works. I'll make it Windows key F5, all right? And then I'll click OK. And just to show you that that does work, let's turn the camera on again. Camera horizontal split. And I'm going to open up a run dialog here. So the cursor enhancement is on, and I made it Windows key F5. That turns it off. I press it one more time, Windows key F5. It turns the enhancement back on. If you make changes to any of these hotkeys, um, make sure that you go to the Zoom Text toolbar, choose File, Save as Default to save any of those changes that you may have made. So again, in the case of um, hotkey conflicts, you can use the hotkey pass-through, again, Alt, Pause, Break key, uh, and then press your hotkey combination. Or if you want a, a more permanent solution, go to the Settings menu and go down to Hotkeys and then reassign your hotkey to whatever you see fit. Um, if you try and reassign it to something that's already a hotkey in Zoom Text, for example, if I try and make my cursor enhancement Alt-Shift-A, um, and then try and click OK, it'll tell me that the hotkey combination is already used or is invalid. All right, so I will be warned if I try and make a hotkey that's already in use in Zoom Text as well. Um, the only thing we can't check for our hotkey conflicts with other programs. So if you change it to something that's you know, a hotkey for a program that you use frequently, we're not able to detect that, but we are able to detect um, if you're trying to reconfigure it to a hotkey that's already in Zoom Text. Okay, so 
And that does it for our demonstration. Um, and um, we yeah. go over just a couple of questions. Yeah, sure. That here. Um, so we had one person ask about um, on her She has a laptop. She doesn't have a number pad. Oh, good question. So I was telling her that you can reassign the keys. Yep. But that I wanted you to show that we do have a laptop. Configuration. Yep. If you go to the file menu and choose open configuration, this will bring you to the folder where um, uh, I don't know if we ship those anymore to tell you the truth. I know that they used to be in there, but I don't see them there anymore. Is it something you have to get through support, maybe? Tech support should be able to send it to you. Um, we used to ship a configuration. Oh, here we go. OK. So the configurations have changed a little bit um, in Zoom Text 10 as to where they're located on the computer. So there are some, um, these are kind of legacy hotkey schemes that we still ship with the product. You go to the file menu and choose open configuration. You're going to want to go to the um, configuration folder in the Zoom Text 10 directory. So program file, Zoom Text 10, config folder. You're going to find a, uh, a hotkey scheme here called ZT with laptop. All right, so if I open this, this is going to be a preset scheme um, that has reassigned some of those hotkeys that use the number pad, which most laptops might not have. So in the case of when rotate those magnification hotkeys, instead of um, Alt, Numpad Plus, they are now Alt, Page Up, Increase, and Alt, Page Down to Decrease. OK, so we've reassigned those um, automatically in that configuration. You're free to do it yourself, again, by going to the Settings menu. Um, and going down to hotkeys and changing it that way. But in the case of the laptop, there is a preset configuration. Also, a lot of laptops do have a number pad, but you have to hit, hit a function key as well. Um, so it's usually like Alt, and then the function key is somewhere in between the Windows key and the Alt key. So some of them do have a number pad. It's just not separate outside of the main keyboard layout. OK, so we had another question about if you've changed your, let's say, your default color setting, and when you toggle it on and off, does it actually toggle your save changes, or is it the Zoom text changes? Um, and it's definitely toggling whatever you use last. Whatever, yeah, whatever the last scheme is. So for example, if I choose yellow on black, and I'm hitting Control-Shift-C, it's going to toggle it on and off. Yeah. The last scheme that was chosen. So if your last scheme is that custom scheme, yep. and you've also saved that as your default, that will be kind of your default on-off Correct. color. Yeah, any of those hotkeys, toggle them on and off. Um, they don't cycle through any of the schemes. Um, we had another person ask, go over the reading zones hotkeys. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't have them in front of me. Let me just open this up here. I believe there's a lot for reading zones, and I kind of purposefully left them out because um, there's a ton of them. <laughs> this isn't for laptops, right? This is for anything? Yeah, yeah. Um, reading zones, I'm just going to do the simple ones um, because there's too many, and I don't know if we have enough time to go through all of them. So if I want to create a new reading zone, it is, whoops, application. Um, I believe it is Control-Alt-Z to create a new zone. OK, and that will bring me into the Reading Zone tool. Now, Reading Zones, you have to define with the mouse. This is the only feature in the product that you can't use the keyboard to define. So I'm just going to left click and drag to make a Reading Zone around here. OK, I'm not going to bother naming it. I'm going to make um, one more zone just so I have a couple of them uh, here. So I'll make another zone there, OK, and then hit the OK button. Now, if I want to trigger any of these zones to read the text that's there, um, you can have up to 10 zones per application. And the hot key to trigger any one of them is you hold down Control and Alt, and then press 1 through 0 uh, on, across the numbers on the top. So Control Alt 1. We'll trigger Few things in zone. sports are easier than complaining so about the poorness with. I'm just going to hit escape. And then control alt 2 will trigger the second zone that I've defined. Be sure to check your daily fix all week long. 
the FUG's daily rundown. Okay. So in the case of reading zones, most of uh, the hotkeys are going to start with Control and Alt. I believe to edit a zone, it's Control Alt E. Um, if you want to resize any of those zones that you have defined, so you can see I can just drag these handles if I wanted to to resize the zone. Um, and again, triggering any of them is Control Alt One through Two. Things in <laughs> the reason I kept this out is reading zones are a little bit more advanced and it can be confusing uh, for some people. So. Um, Can you just briefly explain, he was wondering also why somebody would use these zones and why they're useful? Therein lies the confusion. Um, reading zones you want are used to create a static area of the screen that you want to have read back to you. A lot of cases what you're looking at is dynamic and always changing. So a good example of when you is if you're in something like a con or say you work at a call center and there's a number of different fields that have uh, personal information like name. You can create reading zones around each one of those pieces of information so you can selectively access that information. So name field, an address field, and a phone number field. If I want ZoomText to just read the phone number field, I can create a reading zone around that and then just trigger that zone whenever I need it so that when I'm in the customer record, um, I can just trigger that zone and have the information read back to me. Since it's a static area of the screen, the information has to be on the same spot uh, of the computer screen every time. So for example, I created a reading zone um, oops, here in this area of the screen okay, that's particular to this web page. If I go to a different web page or a different tab, there may or may not be information in those zones that I've defined. So they are static, they're not dynamic, um, and, and that makes them a little bit difficult to use. So they're not really best used for web pages. Um, I'm showing it to you here, but best use case is to be in, a, um, in an application where the screens are very static and aren't changing. Okay. All right. So just a few last-minute things, um, and then we can field any more questions that you guys might have. Um, I have our sales and support hotlines listed there. If you have any questions uh, or problems using ZoomText, you can contact our technical support department. Uh, they're here from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you have any questions on any of these features that we went over, uh, you can go ahead and give tech support a call. Um, we do two weekly webinars on ZoomText. One is a new user introduction, which is done Wednesdays at noon Eastern time. Um, then we also do a What's New in ZoomText 10 webinar Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we also have a worldwide network of dealers that resell our products. So if you're looking for um, some in-home training and or assistance, uh, some of our dealers do offer those services. If you go to our website and click on the Dealers tab, they're listed by state here in the U.S and then country internationally. Um, we will be following up with everyone and give you a recorded version of this session along with a Word document containing all the hotkeys that I went through here. Um, you can also find any of these hotkeys in the ZoomText Help system. If you go to the Help menu in ZoomText and click on ZoomText Help, um, I'll show you where those are so you can refer to those if you like as well. So uh, again, if we bring up ZoomText, go to the Help menu, Zoom text help. On the left-hand side, uh, you're going to have kind of groups of, of help content. You're going to go to hotkeys and Zoom text hotkeys. And most of what I for today, uh, if not all of them, I think all of them are in here, um, are going to be listed. There's a few others that I didn't cover um, that are a little bit more advanced. Program, they are listed there as well, but we'll send you um, a rundown of that as well. Okay, so any other questions that we have? Yep. And just a reminder, um, since there are so many people logged in, if you do want to speak up and ask a question, click on the raise hand icon. It looks like you know, it just looks like a, a yellow hand. Uh, in the GoToWebinar software. 
and uh, we'll unmute you so you can ask your question. But otherwise, um, just go ahead and type it in. Mary Jo, it looks like you have your hand up, so I'm just going to go ahead and unmute you and um, go ahead and ask your question. And if we can't hear you, I mean, it is possible if your microphone isn't set up correctly that we can't hear you. Um, okay. Sounds like you might not have your mic set up correctly, or maybe you pressed the button by mistake. So if you do have a question, just go ahead and type it in, and we'll answer it there. Um, also, if you want to follow up with us after the webinar, maybe you thought of something uh, after you attended that you wanted to ask, you can always email us. Um, the webinar staff, our address is learning at AISquared.com. All right, it looks like someone um, just signed into the webinar. We're actually just uh, finishing up. The webinar started at um, 11 a.m. Eastern time. So unfortunately, you're just getting us at the very end of the webinar. We will follow up with a recording uh, later today or tomorrow uh, about what we went over. But unfortunately, you just signed in at the end, and it did start at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Okay, did anyone have any other questions um, before we end the webinar for today? And again, if, if you have any questions that you want to follow up with later on, um, the email address is learning at AISquared.com. All right. Well, it doesn't look like there's any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. Oh. Let me just ask a question. <laughs> any difference between hotkeys in Microsoft 2007 and 2010? I'm guessing you're referring to Office. Um, the Zoom text hotkeys aren't any different, but um, in Office, I don't know if they've changed any of their hotkeys or not. I don't believe so. I think most of them are pretty constant, but it's possible that they've changed some of them since. But as far as ZoomText goes, um, our hotkeys have pretty much been constant since ZoomText 8, which is way back in 2002, I believe, with the exception of any of the new features. Obviously, those hotkeys are, are new, but um, features that have been in ZoomText, like changing magnification level and any of those enhancements, um, have been pretty much the same for a number of years. And, and another thing, just to reiterate, um, a lot of these hotkey combinations that we went over, um, I also mentioned which were available on the ZoomText keyboard. So many of these are available on the ZoomText keyboard as a single button instead of having to remember these combinations or perform some of these more complex hotkeys. Um, so the ZoomText keyboard is a great companion product to ZoomText to really help you out there as well. And you can reprogram uh, the function keys also. So um, if you wanted hotkeys to do things like trigger a reading zone and things like that, you could do that. Um, we did give a webinar on the ZoomText keyboard last month, and you can find that on our website as well if you want to check that out. But um, the keyboard's a great way to help you out with hotkeys as well. All right, any other questions before we end for today?
All right. Well, it uh, doesn't look like there's any more questions, so we'll go ahead and end the webinar. Um, thank you guys for attending. We hope you have a great rest of the afternoon, and uh, keep an eye out for the follow-up email uh, with those hotkeys and the recording from today's webinar. So thanks again, and have a great day.